Hello everybody, welcome to Asa Rusty Buckets. Did you know that the Slam Dunk Contest is today? All-Star Weekend is here and Saturday night's events include the three-point contest and the dunk contest. However, I will not be watching the dunk contest because there is someone that is going to be not only in attendance but directly affecting the results of that dunk contest that anytime I see him, I want to throw up. And the reason for that is that this particular dunk contest judge uh, generally likes his, his girls in the age range in which the numbers that he's going to be voting on these dunks so anywhere from one to ten poor taste but you know that's just who i am so for those who may not be aware someone whose name i try to avoid bringing up all the time is carl malone because he is a former NBA player of the Utah Jazz, scored some of the most points in NBA history, undeniably a phenomenal basketball player, um, but also a complete and total piece of shit. Just to give you the quick summary, there are other ways to get more details about this, but I'll just give you the forefront because that's not what the point of this video is. Carl Malone, when he was in his early 20s, when he was still in college, returned home and impregnated a 12-year-old girl, um, which is very, very illegal, even for back in the 80s. Carl Malone's NBA career should not have happened. He should not have been in the NBA at the age that he was. And even though, unfortunately, while I believe that that crime that he committed is something that's deserving of being in life in prison, personally, in reality, he probably would have got a few years. But I also don't think an NBA team, given that he went to prison, would have brought him in, especially with the moral panic of crime in the 90s, although especially in this case, it's actually fair and correct. But uh, I think the difference between it being known and unknown what Karl Malone did to such a majority of people is the fact that he did not go to prison. Now, as for why he did not... Well, the family of this 12-year-old girl was dead broke, and they had no chance of raising this kid unless Carl Malone contributed to them financially. So they chose not to pursue a le pursue legal action and get him thrown in jail as much as I'm sure they wanted to, uh, instead opting to let him continue to play in college and then eventually go to the NBA, make millions of dollars, and be able to financially support this child. If you did not know, that child went on to be an NFL player for a couple of of years. I guess he did get his dad's genetics in that regard just to further prove it. But uh thing about that is Carl Malone refused to pay child support. Uh, he ended up being forced to by a court order, but he felt as though he had to pay basically nothing. Um, and despite being a multimillionaire, was only giving like $150 a week for this kid. Now I understand with how inflation is, the late 80s, early 90s, it would have been still not nearly a drop in the bucket for someone who is a multimillionaire, who did a horrific thing, who could at the very least be a decent enough person to just ensure that that child that should never have been a thing to begin with uh, at the very least that child has financial support throughout its life that didn't happen i believe the name of his son was i think it's demetrius bell it's something like that but the thing about this is versus other cases of NBA players being pieces of shit off of the court, is that there is no gray area about this. There is no question that Karl Malone did this. There is no, uh, there should be no question of the morality of it. There are some people who like to look at that and say, well, he was in his 20s. In fact, there is this piece of shit dude on NBA Twitter for a while that luckily is pretty much gone as far as I can tell, called Scout with Brian. I made a video on him a million years ago titled like the worst NBA Twitter account or whatever the worst of nba twitter um and it was about scout with brian being a piece of shit and defending carl malone saying he was in his early 20s and his brain wasn't fully developed um fun fact about me although you may not notice it although i might not look it uh i am about to be 23 years old and when i had this argument with the good old scout i was 20 so yeah i can tell you right now i knew not to do that shit I can tell you right now, every 20-year-old that's not a, as uh, I'll censor this for YouTube's sake, you know what I'm saying, any 20-something any 20, 20 that's not that, 
knows not to do that. It's not a matter of your brain not being developed. You have a developed enough brain by the time you are like 10 to know right from wrong at a basic fundamental level. And this was very obviously wrong, regardless of how developed your brain is. So all of that aside, why the fuck is this guy a slam dunk contest judge? Well, um, first of all, the game's in Utah, so we're trying to just follow that theme, bring in a Utah legend, uh, which, you know, being a Utah legend seems like a great way to not be a good person. But that aside, most people don't seem to know. Now, most people on Twitter know, and I feel like a lot of people get this false idea that because something is well-known on Twitter, that means it's well-known around the world. But Twitter is just such a small, small, small fraction of the NBA fan base. And really, it's usually just those on the most extreme side of the NBA fan base that bother to uh, soil ourselves in the disgusting bath that is NBA Twitter. But I don't know why I chose to use that metaphor, but it is apt. So that said... A majority of fans in Utah don't know. A majority of general NBA fans don't know, so it's not really going to be brought up that much. But you know who I know knows because it's their job to know? The NBA. I am 100% positive. The NBA and Adam Silver is fully aware of what Karl Malone did. Again, there's no gray area here. Karl Malone did this. There is a DNA test and timelines to prove it. But the NBA doesn't care because enough of the NBA fan base, a large enough percentage of it, is entirely unaware that Karl Malone is a pedophile. So they choose what they consider to be more profit motivated. They think having Karl Malone show up here will probably in, uh, get other fans who want to go to that dunk contest just because Karl Malone's going to be there. Because for them, he's a legendary basketball player and not a pedophile. So um, that's why it's happening. It's profit. It's as simple as that. It's capitalism. Uh, same way that it always goes. Morals are just not a factor in this. And really the only way that we can ensure that morals are a factor is by kind of forcing it to be. Because if you look at the NBA, they get this reputation for being like this politically advanced or like ahead of time um, sports organization. The most progressive sports organization in America or whatever. Um, which as I've said before that's like being the coolest president like the bar is so monumentally low that you just have to play a saxophone or uh, i guess call kanye west a jackass and you're the coolest guy alive for that position but being being my point is being a progressive and uh, sports organization it, it, it's not a hard bar to pass because most of them are very much not that for as much as that reputation exists the only reason that they have ever done anything to get that reputation was for profit incentive. Even something like when they put Black Lives Matter on the court in 2020, while that's obviously a very good thing to do, I also was not exactly ready to give the NBA credit for that because I guarantee you they did a risk evaluation and determined that this time taking the right side of things would be more profitable than what they did before, which is force NBA players not to sit for the anthem and say basically, will give you an unbelievable fine if you do that. They shut that shit down before it was even possible as soon as they saw it happening in the NFL. So the NBA chooses whichever is the best thing to make the most money, whether it is the conservative choice or the liberal one. So that's exactly what's happening here. And the only way that we can prevent this from happening is being loud and making our voices heard. And given that the dunk contest sucks every year anyways, and this is not a particularly impressive lineup, um, I'm not going to watch. And I'm not going to tell you not to watch, but I think you shouldn't. I really do. Because if the NBA saw any kind of viewership hit and it was made clear that it was because they decided to platform a sexual predator, then it would probably help make sure that it doesn't happen again. The NBA needs to disavow Carl Malone. Yeah, that's it. Goodbye.